Hey there, so a while ago um, I made um, a video about how to do Riemann integrals but it was just basically going over the the structure of how you figure out a Riemann integral and I said that I would go back and do a video about like step to step how I worked through this. So um, this is a different kind of video from normal and if you like it you've got to let me know and let's just uh, jump straight into it. I hope you found a comfortable position because uh, this can take a while. So we have our integral that we're integrating here. We've got uh, x plus 3 dx and we're doing that between 2 and 4 and we've already got our partitions so we've got 2 plus 2k over n that's um, our formula that gives us the different partitions so we're going to first of all try and work out our upper limit so um, we'll just say the upper limit of the function with these partitions is going to be equal to the sum try and read big so everyone can see. Um, whilst k is going from 1 all the way up to n of, now remember it's going to be all of these different rectangles that are underneath the graph. So if I just kind of, oh, we're on side notes already, but just kind of take a side note here. This is our graph. We've got our x and our y axis and it's doing something like this. We've chosen quite a simple graph and we're looking between 2 and 4. 4, this is our graph, x plus 3. And what we've done is we've used partitions to split it into uh, loads of different rectangles here, because that'll kind of, get, kind of get us an approximation of the area under the graph, which is what integration is all about. Now, if we think about the area of a rectangle, we need to do length times breadth. And um, this, the tall part here, that's going to be f of xk, because that would get you that point there, the function of xk. Um, and to get this length here, we're going to have to do uh, xk minus xk minus 1, because that will get you, uh, it's like xk is this length all the way over here, xk minus 1 is the partition before it, so just that bit there, xk, xk minus 1. Okay, so we're going to do the sum of all of those rectangles, so that's going to be f of xk times xk minus xk minus 1, the partition before. So what we're going to do with this information here is we're actually going to do the substitution. We know what xk is, we've made a formula for that. So what we really have is the sum going from 1 all the way up to n of f of xk. So that means I need to take this xk, substitute it into what the f of x is. So that's going to be, that goes in place of the x. So I'm going to have 2 plus 2k over n plus 3, because that's what our function does. It takes something and it adds 3 to it. Um, and then for this part here, the xk minus xk minus 1, what I'm going to have to do is, this is xk, and then I'll substitute in k minus 1, and I'll take that away from it. So we're starting with our normal xk, we've got 2 plus 2k over n minus, now let's find out what xk minus 1 is. It's still going to be 2, um, that's going to become a takeaway there, and that's going to be 2k minus 1, which outside of the brackets would be 2k minus 2, oh, I put it in brackets for some reason, over n. Let's close those brackets up. And let's see what we are left with from that. Oakley, oakley. Still the sum. k equal to 1 all the way up to n. And in here, we've got a beautiful... 2k over n, 2 and 3 together, that's going to give me a plus 5. Um, let's just keep it in brackets now, because remember, we still need to multiply these together. All I've done is work out a formula for the length and a formula for the breadth, and this is, we're still going to try and find the area of the rectangle. Okay, what's going on in this bracket here? Well, I can see, might want to use a different colour pen for this. This 2 and this minus 2, they're going to get rid of each other and 
Since the denominator of these two fractions is already n, I can just go ahead and take them away like as is. I don't need to find a common denominator. So for one of them, uh, the numerator is 2k and the other one is 2k minus 2. Okay, so <laughs> 2k, okay. So the 2k's, they're gonna subtract from each other. And since this is a takeaway, and that is a takeaway, we're going to end up with positive 2 over n. Okay, so let's just sub that bad boy in there. So all of this has worked out to be 2 over n. And then we've got some nice things in brackets. Okay, let's keep on trucking on. Next line equals still the sum. Need that at the start of every single line to be meticulous. Although I'm guessing that there's probably going to be some people tell me why I've done something wrong and I've not been meticulous, but hey, that's how maths goes. Okay, so we need to multiply these two brackets here, and this bracket has got two things in it, and this bracket's only got one thing in it. So we need to make sure that we're multiplying everything in this bracket by what's in this bracket. So let's just start with the uh, where is my pink? Show you what I'm doing, pen. I'm going to start by multiplying the 2k over n and the 2 over n. I've always kind of mildly hated that rainbow method for multiplying out brackets, but it shows what I mean. So, 2 times 2k, oh sorry, 2k times 2, that's going to give me 4k. And n times n, so that's over n squared. Okay. And then, since we've multiplied those two, we then need to multiply the 5 and the 2 over n. And that way we'll have multiplied everything in that bracket by everything in that bracket. So I'm going to get plus um, 2 times 5 is going to be 10 over n. Now, quite often, something I get asked a lot is, hey, wait, why, why is this not 10 over 5n? And that's, you know, because you can think of 5 as a whole number, it's 5 over 1. So when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators, uh, which would be the 5 and the 2, to get 10, and the denominators, which is this kind of invisible over 1 times n, which is still going to leave me with n there. Okay, wonderful. So now we just need to start uh, working through this sum of and figuring out what's going on there. Um, because we've got two things added together, uh, I should put some brackets around this. Two things added together, and we're going to find the sum of both of these. What I can actually do is kind of like um, distributive. I can do the sum of this plus the sum of this, while k, k runs all the way from 1 up to n. Um, so let's just see what that would look like. So I would have the sum of k is equal to 1 all the way up to n of 4k over n squared plus the sum of, a um, well, k is equal to 1, running all the way up to n of 10 over n. Okay, so I've got these two separate sums to do rather than figure out what all of this is and sum it together. And I can make it um, even easier for myself again by taking out constants. So when we've got k running up to n, k is really the only variable and everything else is going to be a constant. So for this first one here, I can take out 4 over n squared, and then I'll be finding the sum of k running from 1 all the way up to n of, well, k is all I've been left with there. Plus, let's see what happens here. Well, this is basically all constant. There's no k in here. So I could just take that whole 10 over n outside and do the sum k equals 1 all the way up to n of a 1. That's all that's going to be left in there. Okay, next line, let's see what happens when we actually do run k from 1 all the way up to n. This is going to get rid of our summation signs. Uh, summation? I'm not sure that's the right word for that. These, these fancy e's that mean sum. Um, so our constant is still going to be there, 4 over n squared. What this means, k, uh, k equal to 1 all the way up to n, sum of k. That means I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do like a little bonus arrow. 
This means we're going to do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus blah 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 all the way up to n. Um, and that's because when k is 1, it's just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? And we know, because of our good old friend Gauss, that if you've got the sum of all of the numbers up to n, what you have in the end overall is going to be n n plus 1 over 2. So that's just a fact. That's that's a whole story for another day. Um, but if you do the sum of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so like add them all together up to n, this is what you end up with. And on this side, what we're going to get is, so we've got plus, and remember these two are still multiplied together, put a little dot in there so you know that. We're going to have 10 over n, and of this 1, when this runs all the way up to n, we're just going to be left with n, because it's 1, so times by n. Okay, I have a feeling this might actually fit in, on one piece of paper, which would make me really happy. Now, we need to do these multiplies. And remember, when we're multiplying fractions, we just, just multiply the, the numerator and the denominator. So what we're going to end up with here is 4n times the n plus 1 over 2n squared. I like how it's already kind of factored. And on this side, we are going to get plus 10n over n. Now it's time for the pink cancel -y pen. So just looking at the number part of this, I've got a 4 up here and a 2 down here. So I can kind of cancel those down and I will be left with, on the top of my fraction, a 2. Um, we've got an n here and an n squared here. So um, one of those n's can be cancelled out. So that's going to get rid of that n and I'm still going to have an n on the bottom. And I'm also still going to have my n plus 1 in brackets. There's nothing that can cancel that out. And this one here, this is nice. n on the top, n on the bottom. And I'll just be left with plus 10. Okay, so that's how we find the upper sum for this Riemann integral. All of the steps in there. And uh, it fits beautifully on one page. And that's how we managed to skip from this down to 2. n plus 1 over n plus 10. And I think that is a good time for a break. <laughs>